Hey guys, this is test 34 game 2. This is the speakers and philosophers game. It's a bit of a strange game, but it's actually not as difficult as it might appear at first glance. I've laid out here each of the week's speakers and the people who they could lecture on. So we see that, you know, speaker of week 2 knows the most in terms of different philosophers. 3 and 4 are relatively limited. 1 and 5 are somewhere in between each of them being able to speak on three different philosophers. So the first rule is just kind of a loophole closer, and as, as is the second rule also, they're just saying that we can't have any philosophers repeating. So they're making the game doable, in other words. They tell us that, you know, the, fir the rules here all tell us about the different people who, th the different speakers that specialize in these different things, but we see that because three and four are so limited, we know that it turns out that the people on week one and week two cannot do M or N, nor can the person on week five. Because, let's say speaker on one did M, then one of three or four would do N, Nietzsche, and the other one of three or four would have no one left to do. So, speaker of week one cannot do Mills, speaker, uh, Mill, speaker of week two cannot do Mill or Nietzsche, speaker of week five cannot do Nietzsche. This is the only way that 3 and 4 will have their limited specialty set a bit left to do something with. Imagine if week 1 speaker did M and week 2 speaker did Nietzsche. 3 and 4 would not be able to do Mill or Nietzsche because they'd already been used. So for that reason, it's workable only if we have 1 and 2 collectively do K and L, 5 do 1 of O or P, so that 3 and 4 are left to do Mill and Nietzsche. So this is the initial setup for the game simply by crossing off some of the invalid possibilities, leaving us with whatever remains. So we know that 1 and 2 will do K and L, 3 and 4 will do M and N, and 5 will do 1 of O or P. So question number 8, they jump right in with a could be true question. There's no orientation question here. What could be true? Of course we know that the first and second speakers cannot do Mill or Nietzsche, so for that reason a, B, and C are all gone. We know that 5 cannot do Nietzsche. We've just crossed that off. He has to do, 5 has to do either O or P. So D is gone, leaving E as our answer for number 8. Next, number 9, they're asking us how many different possibilities there are if we do things in alphabetical order. So if they were alphabetical order, they, we see that they already kind of are. We just got to limit it a little bit further. So we could have K on 1, L on 2, M on 3, N on 4, and then 5 could be either O or P. Either way, it would still be in alphabetical order even to have O or P on 5, even if it was not the immediately next letter in the alphabet. So for that reason, there are two different possible alphabetical orderings, either K-L-M-N-O or K-L-M-N-P. So 2 choice A is our answer for number 9. Next, number 10, they're asking us what would allow the possibilities to be completely determined, reducing what we have here, down to only one specific layout. So you want to think about what sort of information would be helpful here. It would be helpful to know when specifically we had Mill and Nietzsche, the 3-4 breakdown. It would also be helpful to have the KL breakdown on 1 and 2, and then of course whether 5 goes with O or P. So we want answer choices that make use of each of those things. We want one choice talking about KL, one, one part of a choice talking about KL, one part of a choice talking about MN, and then one choice talking about O or P being chosen on a particular day. So if you look at choice A, that's kind of good. It talks about KL, talks about M, doesn't talk about O or P. So for that reason, A is not going to limit things fully as 5 would still remain ambiguous. So A is gone. B, K, M, N, that also does not talk about O or P. So if we knew where K, M, N, N were, we'd be wasting one of the three people listed by not having that third person be about O or P. So if we had, for example, just to clarify, if we had K limited to 1 or 2, M limited to 3, N limited to 4, what's happening on 5? We still don't know. So we don't want any choice mentioning both of K or L, mentioning both of M and N. We want to tell about only one of those two things, one of M or N, so kind of we can, because if, if we know where K is, we then automatically know where L is. We don't need to say if K is on 1, 
it's unspoken that L will be on 2, it's assumed. It's already implicit. If we learned that K was on 2, we know that L would have to be on 1. So you could scan through now looking for 1 of KL, 1 of MN, 1 of OP. And we find that in choice C. We have K, M, and O limited to particular weeks. And then we automatically know where L and N will go. And we know that P will not be happening at all. So for that reason, choice C is our answer to number 10. Next, number 11, we're now being told about the philosopher's nationalities. So we know that German, of course, are K and N. We know that the British are L, M, and O. So now they're asking us, could be true or accept? So four of these could be true, one cannot be true. Find the four that could be true, eliminate them, and whatever remains will be your answer. So could we have one and four be British? Yeah, one could be L, and four could be M, mil. That would work perfectly fine, so A is gone. Could 1 and 4 be German? Yeah, we could have 1 be K and 4 be Nietzsche. That would work perfectly fine, so B is gone. Could we have 2 and 3 be British? Yeah, 2 could be Locke and 3 could be Mill. Works perfectly fine, so C is gone. Could we have 3 and 4 both be German? That poses a problem because we only have one German going on 3 or 4, Nietzsche. The other one of them is British, M. So D is impossible, and as such is our answer for, for question 11. I will look at E, though. 4 and 5 be British. We could have 4 be mil, 5 be O. That works perfectly fine. So we're good for number 11. I will say, of course, that if you want to do this a bit more quickly, you would want to look for a choice mentioning 1 and 2 or a choice mentioning 3 and 4 because we know that we're having one of those guys be British, Locke, 1 be German. And then, of Kant, and then, of course, 3 and 4, we have one of them being British, male, one being German, Nietzsche. So we can't have both 1 and 2 be British or both 1 and 2 be German. We can't have both 3 and 4 be German, can't have 3 and 4 be British. So you want to look for adjacent numbers in those pairings of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 if you want to scan through a bit more quickly for number 11. Finally, number 12. For this one, they are adding a th they're suspending the rules, adding a third variable to the week 3 the variable of s, sorry. So other than that, we could treat it as a general could be true question. But the problem is that this actually puts everything into flux because now we know that perhaps because 3 is less limited, maybe 1 of m or n, mil or Nietzsche could appear on 1, 2, or 5. So we've got to open things up a little bit here. So now things are far more open-ended. We don't need to restrict 1, 2, and 5 and not allow them to have Mill or Nietzsche. They still could because 3 has suddenly become far more specialized with the addition of S. So we know that we can, we can have perhaps 5B N, 4B, 4B Mill, but what we cannot have is have both of M or N occurring somewhere other than 4. We cannot have Mill be 1 and Nietzsche be 5, for example. We still need to allow one of those two things to occur on 4 in particular. So for that reason, you want to look through these choices here, all of which mention Mill and Nietzsche, and make sure that none of those choices excludes number 4 altogether because all five choices mention both M and Mill and Nietzsche. So if you scan through, A is good because it mentions Nietzsche on 4, C is good mentions Nietzsche on 4, D is good because it mentions um, mil on 4, and E is good mentioning mil on 4. So all of A, C, D, and E are automatically eliminated. And then leaving B is our answer. Then if you look at B, you see that it's having mil and Nietzsche on 2 and 3, leaving 4 with nothing to lecture on at all.